CCTV Camera World is proud to provide support for products purchased from our website. If you purchased your product from another vendor, please contact the vendor you purchased from for further assistance. In this video, I'm going to show you how to play back recorded footage from your Security Cameras Inc. NVR system. So there are two honorable mentions or three honorable mentions for recording playback of events that just happened. The first you can access by clicking a camera and then clicking on the instant playback button. What this is going to do is automatically play back about a minute of footage before you click the instant playback button. And you can see that video in the grid screen here and then click the X button to exit out of there. You can also hover your mouse to the right hand side of this interface and then click on the eye icon to bring this back into view. What this is going to let you do is view motion detection and AI events that just occurred. So for example, if I click the play button here, I'll see that this car passed and that's what caused that motion detection event. I can either right click or click the X at the top to get back to the live view window. So this event detection playback screen is available again by clicking the eye icon. If you want to see it all the time, you can click the pin icon. I'm going to hide it by clicking the eye icon again. This leads me to the actual playback screen. So you can access it either by clicking playback here on the bottom or clicking the menu icon and clicking the search button. So two ways to get the, the playback screen. Again, clicking the menu and then search or clicking the playback icon on the menu here. So I'm going to click search and it's going to take me to the general search tab. Here I can see I can search for the type of footage. If I wanted to uncheck all of these and only search for normal and motion, I would uncheck that and then choose only normal and motion. However, I'm going to search for all of them, even though I know I only have normal and motion detection recording. Down here in the bottom, I can choose the mainstream and the channels, so mainstream or substream. Again, if you want to view multiple cameras at a time, say more than two or three, then you do need to choose the substream. So if I choose the mainstream and I try to choose all of these channels and I choose a random time, it's going to be telling me that the resource is not enough. Again, I can only do the first two cameras and then the sixth camera. So if I choose substream and then I choose a random time, you'll see that I can view all of the streams from the cameras at the same time. So again, mainstream is really only if you want to focus on one or two cameras. And then some stream is if you want to playback from multiple cameras at the same time. So this brings me into the playback controls. And here we see that there is a full screen option. First, I'm going to pause the playback. And then the full screen option, what this does is gets rid of all of the menus around the screen. So you can focus in on the grid screen. And then if you hover your mouse over to the side or to the bottom, you can bring those menus back up. So this brings the cameras into full screen and then if you want to bring one camera into full screen you can just double click it. So I'm going to go ahead and bring my menus back up by scrolling to the bottom and then clicking the full screen button again and it's going to bring my menus back into view. The next option is the fast backwards so if I click play and then I do fast backwards it's actually going to reverse the screen and you'll see it's jumping over the time. So then if I want to do play, I just click playback again, and it's going to start playing the footage back normally. Next would be the slow play option. This is useful if you just want to get a slow half speed of the playback. You could do a quarter of the speed, an eighth of the speed, or a sixteenth of the speed before it goes back to half speed. So you'll see how slow you're viewing up here at the top right hand side. This will be where your playback speed is shown. So if you click the play button again, you'll just get a normal play. You slow it, you get slow half, or you can do step forward, that's going to step between frames. You could stop the playback, that's going to get rid of all the cameras that you have selected and pulled up. So if I come in here and I click stop, you'll see that it, all the cameras went away. I'm going to bring the cameras back up. Fast forward again, I'm just going to bring this camera to full screen. You could click on fast forward, that's going to increase your playback speed. So you can go to two times, four times eight times and 16 times then back to two i'm going to go back to normal playback speed and then you can also use digital zoom much like you can in the live view it works exactly the same so i'm scrolling in with my scroll wheel and then i can adjust it using the gray box in the picture in picture scroll back out and then click off of the digital zoom option 
Here, bring my camera back into full screen. Here's the video clip option that I will be covering in the next video. Audio, if this camera has a microphone, I can listen to the audio from it. I could take a manual snapshot that would be found in the picture tab after taking that. The tags, this would be found in the tag section if I wanted to tag a piece of video in playback and have it in the tag tab. And then this is the stretch switch. This is similar to the live view. Essentially, it's just stretching the image. I can do the original aspect ratio or I can stretch it to the full frame. This leads me to the timeline. Now that I have the substream selected and I have the six cameras running, on the timeline here, we can see there is a key at the bottom where normal is green, motion detection is yellow, IO means alarm inputs. If you have any of those connected to your NVR, those would be in red. PIR, if you have any passive infrared cameras or sensors connected to the NVR. AI would be your smart detection or AI rules that you've enabled. Alarm would be if you have any, again, similar to IO, if you have any alarm inputs. Manual is if you right click on the live view screen and do the manual recording option as shown in the live view video. And then ANR is automatic network replenishment. That's if you have it enabled and you also have an SD card in your camera. It will show you when the NVR dropped the camera and was able to replenish the footage from the camera's SD card. So like I mentioned, I only have normal and motion detection recording. You'll notice the timeline is relatively small, so you can either use the scroll wheel on your mouse. You'll notice it's changing this time selector option here on the right hand side as I'm scrolling out. So 24 hours is the widest amount of time you can look at. 20, it goes down to 20 hours, then 16, 12, 8, 4, 2, 1 hour, last but not least 30 minutes. So again, I'm just using my scroll wheel or you can click on each one of these options to hop between them. So I could go from one hour to 12 hours just by clicking the options here. Inside of here, I just wanna show on channel three here where I have a hybrid recording schedule set up to where it's actually showing me where motion detection was detected on these three channels, but then it only did normal continuous recording here. So you can see if you set up a hybrid recording schedule or you set up normal and motion detection recording at the same time, you'll notice where a camera wasn't seeing motion, it will still record, but this is very useful, for example, if you have cameras where you wanna record normal all the time, 24 seven, but you also wanna see when motion detection occurred. That way you're not having to sift through hours of video to find that motion detection event. So I'm gonna scroll out. So this is the general way to search for recorded footage, and it shows you how you can sift through some of this footage. And like I mentioned, see where there are motion detection events and where there weren't motion detection events present, or you could set up a normal plus motion detection recording schedule to see both types of recording. The second tab is event recording. So again, you have normal motion and all of these to be able to select, and then you can choose your channel. So I'm just gonna choose channel one and channel two and click the search button. What this is gonna do is give you a neat grid screen of all of the events that were detected for the camera in the time period that you selected. So you would select your date and time at the top, choose your channels, and then click the search button to search for events in that time period. So I have it set to search for motion detection events. So we can see all of the motion detection events detected for channel one and channel two throughout the day. So if I double click on one of these events, it's gonna take me to the recording for that footage. And then I can right click to get back to the grid screen to pull up those options. So this is a very easy way to search through footage. And then if I get rid of normal even, it's just gonna show me any of the motion detection events that were detected during that time. Next would be the sub periods tab. What this lets you do is select a channel for example, again, channel one, and then you can choose the split screen option. I'm gonna leave it set to the default four. And then what you can do is click the play button. And what this is going to do is choose three different periods during the day. So if I choose each one of these grid screen options, it's actually sectioned out this footage for this camera into three different windows. 
So you see the first window is around 8.40 in the morning. The second window is around 9.42. And then this last window is around 12.41 for that recording for this channel. So this is an easy way, if you have a particular channel that you know a lot of stuff went on in front of, you can split it up into different split screens and see different various times throughout the time that you've selected. It's a very easy way to segment or split up a camera's footage so you can easily review multiple time periods at the same time. So the next tab is the Smart tab. And what this allows you to do is use an algorithm. Essentially, the NVR is always running an algorithm to detect when things actually occurred in front of the camera. So when I'm scrolled out on the timeline, the timeline looks like it's a completely blue, like there was something happening all the time. However, if I scroll in, you'll start to notice that there are some breaks here. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on this and zoom in further. So what this is, is an algorithm on the NVR trying to detect when things were happening in front of the camera. Although I'm continuously recording, this is a normal continuous recording schedule. The NVR took it upon itself to intelligently detect when things were happening. So it's gonna actually jump between these small little events because that's when it detected that something was happening in front of the camera. For example, this truck is slowly moving out of the parking lot. So this large block of blue was the NVR detecting that something was happening that you may want to see. Now this is not going to be 100% accurate, but it is a much better representation of things actually happening in front of the camera that you wanna look through. That way you don't have to sift through hours of footage. It's very similar to having a normal plus motion detection recording schedule that'll allow you to sift through footage without needing to watch hours. The next is the tag option. I've went ahead and created an example tag for channel one. Essentially this is really only useful if you sit in front of your NVR lot and monitor what's going on in front of it and you wanna tag a certain event that happened. So for example, if I click the playback button, it's gonna take when I made that tag and show me the video from that time. In fact, it, it did roughly a minute of recording. So whenever you create a tag, and you can choose the pre-play and the post-play. And that's gonna take your tag and pull video from the NVR based on your pre-play and post-play for that tag that you've created and allow you to review the footage around that time period. So for example, if I click the X and get back to my live view screen, if I were to click on this channel, come over here to the add customized tag option, I could tag this guy walking and call it man and then save go back into my playback screen go back into the tag go to channel one click search now we have the man tag so if i click playback again it will show footage from when i created that tag so 30 seconds before because i have that selected and 30 seconds after i created the tag you can delete tags by clicking the delete button and it'll ask you if you're sure and you can click yes. Next would be the external file. This is if you've exported footage from your NVR but then wanna play it back on the NVR. You could also play it back on your computer. So this would be essentially like plugging the USB into your computer and then playing the file with VLC or whatever viewing software you're using. Next would be pictures. Now this is if you have pictures set up or Again, if you do it from the playback screen and you click on a camera and then click the manual snapshot button. So you could set up automatic snapshots in the record menu. I do briefly cover that in the recording video or you can manually take them and search for them. I did do an example one for channel one. So if I click search, you'll see where I did a manual snapshot before making this video at 1022. Next would be Slice. This is another useful feature for finding a specific event. So you could choose, again, I'm just gonna pick on channel one. Here I have month of June, so I can choose June. And you'll notice it's starting to fill these grids as I'm refining my search, right? So if I go to the 27th, so right now I just have all the events for this camera in June. So you see June 1st going to June 30th. So let's choose a day. Now that I selected yesterday, it's gonna pull up events for each hour. It's gonna actually divvy up that footage for each hour. Then I can go into an hour 
and it's actually going to divide that hour up into a minute increment. So again, this slice tab is another very useful way to avoid needing to sift through events. If you know if an, when an event, if you roughly know, I should say, when an event occurred, then you can come into the slice menu and look at the individual slices for an hour and notice or find where things aren't looking the way they're supposed to be. The last type of playback is the AI detection tab. So the AI that you're able to pull video back from for depends on your NVR, the camera, and then the type of detection that you have enabled. So the types of AI detection that you can search for are face, license plate, human and vehicle, PID and LCD, which stands for perimeter intrusion detection and line crossing detection, repeat visitors, and face attendance. So those are the AI features that this NVR is allowed to search for, able to search for. So I know that I have good human and vehicle events. So I'm going to click on the human and vehicle tab. Here I can see a list of events that channel one found. So at the bottom, it will show the channel. And if I had events from other channels, I could click the channel icon, choose those channels, and then choose the date and time where I had events from those channels. Next is the filter. I happen to have human and motor vehicle detection enabled on my camera. If I were to uncheck non-motorized vehicle and motor vehicle, I'm only searching for events where humans were present, and then I can click the search button. Here I can see that four events where humans were detected. And then if I wanted to preview that event, I would simply click on the event, and it'll pull up in this neat little preview screen here at the bottom. Over I, if I double click, or click the play button for that event, it will take me to the full playback screen for that event. So if I wanted to search for a motor vehicle event, then I would uncheck human and check motor vehicle and then click search. Again, if I wanted to preview this event, I would simply click on the event and it would bring it into this preview screen here. If I wanted to dig a little deeper into this event, then I would need to double click the event or I would need to check the event and then come back down here to the playback button. So I can either double click on this event here or come down here and click the playback button. Or if I wanted to rewind a certain number of time or do custom playback, then I could click this carrot icon and choose that here. However, I'm just going to do regular playback and click play. Just going to bring up the event. And then if I wanted to bring up some video before the event, I could do pre-play and choose anywhere from zero seconds to 10 minutes. And then for post play, if I wanted to see what happened after the event, I could do anywhere from zero seconds to 10 minutes. So if I do one minute before and one minute after, and then click the play button, what this is gonna do is if my NVR has video recorded there, then it will actually pull that video from my NVR and display it. And you can see these blue rectangles that are going over each of these vehicles is the event detection detecting that a vehicle is present. To get back out of this screen and get back to my AI screen, I simply need to right click and it will take me back to my search window where I can find other events. Hopefully this video helps you play back video from your NVR system. In the next video, I'll cover how to export these footage to a USB thumb drive. Thank you for watching. If you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe.